And now, in remembrance of the life of Gary Russell Sr., Brawler Sports presents a 2018 throwback interview, Gary Russell Jr. All right, it's your boy Rick Mohammed. I'm a Brawler Sports Media. I'm live here in Enigma Boxing Gym, home of Gary Russell Jr., the WBC featherweight champ. Uh, we're right here in uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland, and this, uh, his camp is winding down. How you doing, champ? Man, I'm feeling good. I'm sore. I'm tired, but it don't really matter. The job got to get done anyway. That's like boxing, you know, it's a lot of sacrifices that come with this sport. This man here can tell you he's doing two a days. Hard as he work, hell, he say they feel like three a days. The spawn. You do three a days. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just wanted to touch on some things real quick with you about your your history and this whole boxing thing with the with the Russell family. Man, I read some articles. Your dad, senior, the patriarch of this family. You catch, you know, had a two bedroom apartment, and the lobby was a was the actual workout spot. And if that didn't work, in the alley, I'm from South Side of Chicago. The alley was our main thing. How did you catch, like, overcome senior Gary Russell, your pops, the whole ordeal to make you guys rough and tough and this fight machine? Y'all are all y'all cats are successful in this sport, man. Oh yeah, I mean, like I say, my father was my favorite superhero. You know, at the end of the day. What we went through molded us into the individuals that we are today. Mm-hmm. People don't know, we used to go to some of the worst neighborhoods that there possibly is in D.C., in Maryland, mm-hmm. in Virginia, just to get spawned. Just to get spawned. We'd go around with the little kids in the neighborhood. My father would go and talk to the older guys. Well, man, who's some of the young kids around here that be getting into fights and all that stuff? Man, line them up. Y'all show y'all trying to make some money. Y'all trying to make some money. And we would literally, this is how we would get in shape for amateur tournaments because we wouldn't, we couldn't get no spawn for nobody else in the gyms in the area that we were competing in. So, yeah, it was crazy, man. It helped mold us and build our character to what it is today. And that it did. And you, your brothers, your pops, every time I see you catch out, y'all always uh, uplifting, inspiring uh, scholars and gentlemen. I've never seen you turn down a fan for an autograph or a picture. Uh, hey, they make you. You know what I'm saying? And I was talking, I seen how your dad, your mom, is it uh, Lawan? So I, re- I read about her saying how your dad, he would never admit it, that he basically taught himself how to box. And uh, Uncle Bobby, yeah, Uncle Bobby Bob, Bob. sitting on the couch when Wide World of Sports would come on. I remember I saw Howard Davis, Sugar Ray Leonard, them fight on there. Ray Leonard, yep. And he say Uncle Bobby taught him how to sit the speed bags and the bags and the jump rope. And he basically self taught himself. The basic fundamentals, which is the most important parts of boxing, and 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 put that, that in, and inspired you guys to do all the same. Oh, yeah, and much more than that. You know, people tend to question my father's ability to train us because he didn't have a, all these fighters with all the accolades. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but we was only the canvas. He was the one that was doing the painting. You know, so wow, yeah. Oh, definitely, he was the one that was doing the painting. You know, um, and I appreciate I appreciate him for that. Everything that he's done for us. You know, man, that's my favorite superhero. We got a birthday. We got a birthday coming up May 20th. Yeah, right. He got an anniversary uh, May 15th. Yeah, now, his anniversary is May 15th. Okay. Uh, with him and my mom. And they have been married for over 30 years. Oh, wow. You so know, that's so. A, that's a blessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Very tight niche family. Oh, yeah. And then, so he 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 dis, he taught he learned all of this from Uncle Bobby, displayed it and got it to you guys. Like you say, he does have those accolades though, because he's got a he got a kid named Lil Gary. That's right. That's you. Right. He got Ant, Ant, uh, Antonio Antonio and Antoine, and Antoine was in the Olympics in Rio, and you're an Olympian yourself, world champion. Uh, your other two brothers, Antonio and Antoine, they're very well on their way. I mean, you guys are a fight machine. I got a kid. In Chicago, you may know. You ever heard of Vince Rock Hudson from Chicago? I heard the name. I heard the name before, but I, I honestly don't watch the sport of boxing. I don't watch TV that much, yeah. you know. But I definitely heard the name. So, and he's got a story just like this. Him and his brother, dad taught them how to box at the at the, at the Chicago Boys Club on Woodline, and walked them all the way through the nationals and through the pros and everything. And I say, Gary got the same story pretty much. And what a lot of people don't understand is when you when you're dealing with your corner. Your corner is your last line of defense. So when anything else fails, when you get to the corner, you have to believe without a doubt. Question of a doubt. Exactly. Everything it is that they're telling you to do in the heat of battle. Boxing is what I do. It's not who I am. 
you know what I'm saying? My father is my father. So I know that he has 100% my best interest at hand. Absolutely. So it's much easier for me to go out there and try to execute what it is that he wants me to do. Because there's no doubt in my mind of what it is. You know what I mean? And if it's not getting done, I, in my mind, it's not working because I'm not executing it the exact way that he wants me to get done. Right, and you guys, you guys got a good working relationship, father, son. Who else are you going to trust? And, and, and the thing about boxing is, I keep telling Catch, you have to be a good listener. Right. You're coming back to the corner between that one-minute round rest. They see things that you don't see. So right. when you mention the word execute, that's exactly what he wants you to go and do. I'm not wasting my time and breath in here with you. If I tell you to go do something, when this bell ring, I want you to go out there and start making the corrections on the spot right then and there. And that's the key. What, what advice would you give these young cats up and coming? Oh, man, keep pushing. Keep pushing. Never cut any corners. Never cut any corners. And like you say, the biggest thing is to follow instructions. You have to listen. You have to listen. You have to have someone that you truly, truly believe in. Mm -hmm. And when you have that connection, you have to go out there and execute it no matter what the situation is. They got your back. They got your best interest at hand. Real quick, you're fighting uh, Joseph Diaz Jr. on the 19th right here in the National Harbor in, in uh, Oxon Hills, guys. Tickets are still on sale. Got plenty of good seats still left. Come out and support this cat right here. Uh, his brothers are fighting, Antoine and Antonio. It's been a long time coming since the three of them have fought on the same card as professionals, correct? Correct. So now, now I got to ask you the question there. He wants to unify the winners of Santa Cruz. He wants them to unify that at the 125-pound weight class at 126 if that doesn't work then you made a statement that you're going to move up to 130 and bully them guys around now i know you want to get that l back from lomachenko of course of course i mean that's a no-brainer like i say if you've been watching any of my inter other interviews i've been telling people i'm not even answering questions about lomachenko until we have a contract signed that's something that's going to get done before the conclusion of my career well you definitely got the right man behind you al Heyman. He, if anything, anybody can make that fight happen again. It will be Al. Uh, you know, uh, Montel Griffin worked with Al. When Al started, it was just uh, Vernon Viper Forrest and Montel Griffin. And uh, rest in peace, Vernon. You know, they took Vernon from us too soon. He was a, a hell of a guy, champion, and, and a person. So what is it like, before I let you go, what is it like in the Russell family when you're not fighting, when you don't have anything scheduled, when you're just being a, a Gary Russell Jr., little Gary, what do you like to do for fun? Are you, first of all, are you married? I'm married. I've been married for seven years. Congrats. You got kids? We got three kids. I got, That's what's up. I got three babies. Three babies. I got my two girls and I got a little boy. I just had a little son. An so, another man, boxer in the future. <laughs> me a little soldier, man. We kept having girls. And the funny thing is, all of my brothers was having girls. Oh, man. Everybody was having person. girls, man. So. I finally got me a little soldier, and of course, his name is Gary, too. Of course. Well, it wouldn't be nothing else. What do, you, what do you guys do for fun? Like, when you're not fighting, what, what do you guys do for fun, you and your, your little army? Oh, man, that's exactly what it is, too, <laughs> man. That's exactly what it is. Um, we like to spend time with one another. Like I say, we don't watch TV as much. I feel as though the society kind of water us down mm -hmm. when it comes to that. That's the time that you can really be spending with your friends and your family. Absolutely. I try to invest as much as I can into my brothers, my wife, my children. Um, we go bowling. We go bowling. Yeah, we go bowling. We hunters, too. Oh, wow. We hunters. We're really? definitely hunters. We we out of season right now, but it's cool. Mm -hmm. we, we, we'll we wait and be patient, but we definitely hunters. You know, and like, like I say, we like to spend time with one another. Grind. And we in the gym every day. Don't get that. Don't miss that part. Birthdays, holidays, anniversaries, my wife can, can, will tell you. We in here. We in here. So. What prediction do you have anything to tell your fans they can expect from uh, Gary Russell Jr. in this uh, next performance you're coming out in on, uh, on the May 19th? Any, anything good you want to reveal to them? Uh, man, y'all just get used to the same thing that you're used to seeing from Mr. Gary Russell Jr. Hand speed, punch and power, ring Sweet generalship. Man, Slip, you know it, ring, you know it, you on point, you on point, slick ring savviness, man, that's definitely going to be there, like I say, I, I don't plan on going 12 rounds, Um, I, I don't plan on going 12, I think this fight is definitely going to end much sooner than that, Um, I got to take my hat off to him, He, a lot of these other world champions are not in a rush to get in the ring with me, 
you know, they're not they're not in the rush to get in the ring with me. So I take my hat off to them just for having the guts to be able. Respect. Yeah, yeah, of course, you know, you know, and you know, to actually get in the ring and say, you know what, I'm going to fight Gary Russell Jr. and I'm going to give it the best shot that I can give it. I wouldn't expect nothing less, and I wouldn't want nothing less as a champion. So. That's all I've ever seen you come out and do. Of course. Real quick, your message to our people, young, the young black youth, the young black teens, young black men and women up and coming. Racism is bigger than ever right now. It never really went away, but it's resurfacing in a way that's just spiraling. What is your message to, you know, we got, we got our young brothers out here getting murdered by the hands of handguns of cops. They're unarmed. Talk to them, champ. We need to stick together. We need unity. You got to understand that we are kings and we are queens. And we have to conduct ourselves as such. To the young men out here, when you walk across somebody in the street and you make eye contact with them, it's the manly thing. It's the righteous thing to do. Just to speak to them, say, hi, how you doing? How's your day been? That don't make you a sucker. That don't make you a punk. That makes you respectful and it makes you create conversation with your fellow brothers. Young sisters, young queens, y'all do the exact same thing. When you see another young lady walk past and y'all make eye contact, make sure you at least speak to them. That brings unity amongst one of us. We have to conduct ourselves like kings and queens. Run with it. Run with it. Y'all our next generation. We 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 paving the way for y'all and y'all gonna make it even better. Just like the song, Our Children Are the Future. Hey, champ, I didn't want to take up much of your time. I had a whole lot I could have covered with you. I know I just was, when you and uh, were nine years old in the silver gloves, what's that little kid name he lost to? Rashi Warren. Rashi Warren, Rashi Warren <laughs> Just man. to see that you guys ended up being teammates on the USA boxing on the team. US Olympic team, man, in Beijing. That was cool. I mean, but it goes to show you that resilience is everything. Mm. You got to stay persevering. You got you to gotta have it. You got to have that, mm -hmm. that not quit. Um, I've been competing and I had my first bout when I was seven years old, you know, I completed in silver gloves when I was nine years old. I was supposed to actually been 10, you know, <laughs> I was supposed know, to be 10. No change the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was supposed to be 10, you yeah. know, and actually be able to run into him and compete against him. And now both of us, he was actually was, was a world champion at, at a point, yeah. you know, for him to be able to become an Olympian and then become a world champion speaks volumes of what persistence can do you know Absolutely. so that's a good thing and if you're out there and you're watching man keep pushing shorty keep grinding we on this grind together that's what's up hey man i want to thank uh team russell my man gary russell jr uh featherweight champion wbc i'd like to thank um miss Lashawn murray uh miss davida is her name and i i had sent a message out facebook and that's how this all came about uh, Davida disseminated the information to Miss LaShawn. Thank you so much, Miss LaShawn. And then getting with you and uh, the patriarch of the family, Gary Russell Sr. Thanks to your pops uh, for making this happen for me tonight, man. This is big. I'm Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media. This is my man, Gary Russell Jr., putting it down, giving me his exclusive 101. He got about a shy of two weeks left before his fight night. Champ, much respect. Good luck to you. I, I plan on being there. Man, we love you, baby. It. We ready. <laughs> it's your boy Rick Mohammed live here at the MGM Oxon Hills, Maryland, right outside of DC. I'm here with Gary Russell Sr. As you know, I did the interview with these guys about two weeks ago at the Enigma Gym. Let's do a follow up here to weigh in. Uh, Pops, what, what, what can we expect now? What do you think of your boys tomorrow night? It's battle time, baby. Uh, they're ready. They put the work in. Time to grind, get it, get paid, let's go home. I heard that, and, and, and these guys tip the scale. They all look like they're in tip-top shape. I know y'all never come into a fight unprepared, untrained, and out of shape. Oh, absolutely. I mean, part of the battle is really in the gym. The hard work is in the gym. Yeah, absolutely. The camp. The camp is the hard work. There you go. The skills is already there. And they got it done, man. They're in superb shape. Conditioning is up. You know, if you notice, all of them are underweight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so now we can go hydrate, eat a little bit of food. And rest I, up. And I talked to Gary, and he said, hey, you know, it, you know, it's rehydration with the fighters after the weigh-in. But he said, you know what, to be honest, I ain't really super hungry, you know. He got his wife with him. He, queen want to eat. Family want to eat. He just going to go sit down and have a normal meal. But for the most part, cutting the weight ain't a problem for Gary. 
No, it's Wonder not. Boy. No, it wasn't. Actually, um, a week, uh, last week, he was a little bit on weight, too much. I said, man, we got to pull it back a little bit, let you eat. Yeah. So the camp was really good. Anytime you can go a seven-week camp and eat the yourself. whole time, you know, that's good. I mean, eating steaks, sweet potatoes, yeah. you know, string beans, collard greens, all the good stuff. All the nutrition, you know, <laughs> yeah. the fluids and everything. So, you know, we, we're pretty happy about this. All right, I ain't going to keep you. It's your boy Rick Mohammed. I'm here live with Gary Russell Sr. winding down. The weigh-in is over. Tomorrow is put up a show up, and they go to battle. Thank you for your time. Hey, Sr., tell them who you're talking to real quick, Brawler Sports Media, baby. Talk to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy Rick Mohammed live. I'm out. Brawlers, baby. Brawlers, baby.